All right, so now we've moved on to the more advanced topics. We're going to start thinking about real numerical computing. Up to this point, it's been kind of arithmetic and going through lists, applying conditionals, but now we're gonna see the real strength of numerical programming for engineers, which is when we start doing lots of simulations or trying to deal with linear algebra, matrix multiplication, things like that. That's where computers really shine, and that's what we're gonna talk about today. So the first thing we're gonna do is talk about NumPy. This is a library, numerical Python. And the way you import a library is with this import keyword. And then you can give it a shortcut, a nickname. And so in this case, it's very common to use NP as the nickname. So import NumPy as NP. And as soon as I do that import, I have access to all of the methods inside NumPy. Um, so for example here, I've used set print options to set the precision to be three significant digits and not to do uh, small numbers with scientific notation. Um, so this is just an example of how we're going to do the format, which is np dot and then the name of the function. Um, so it's a little bit like the format function that we did before. Okay, so that's all there is to those two examples. There's unfortunately just way too many uh, functions to go through on NumPy. I can't get through them all in a short video like this. But basically, what NumPy gives you is it gives you a lot of new functions having to do with math, scientific operations, like what you'd get in a scientific calculator, square root, log, sine, that kind of thing. Um, then the real payoff is that it gives you arrays. So you get arrays of any dimension. One two-dimensional two array is like a matrix. 3D is like a tensor. So you can build that up as high as you want. Um, and you'd also get the operations on those things like matrix multiplication. We'll talk about that in a minute. Then you also have sub-modules, things that are kind of specialized. So you get a linear algebra sub-module for matrix decomposition, eigenvalues, things like that. An FFT module for the discrete Fourier transform and a random module so that you can sample from random probability distributions. Okay, so just for as an example, let's look at NumPy random. We'll use this dir function, D-I-R for directory, and we'll look at all the stuff that tells us about what kind of functions we can call inside NumPy random. And what you can see is the name of a lot of probability distributions like binomial, exponential, the gamma function, right? You also have some tests like a chi-squared test and uh, shuffle is an operation. So just for an example, let's take a look at the help for random int. So this is NumPy rand int and why I mention it is because the help functions for the NumPy are really nicely documented. And so this tells us really carefully what all of those parameters do and what the output is, and then also some examples. So it's really nice. Almost all of the Python functions are documented like that. So they're really helpful. So for example, let's say we had some 20 sided dice. After reading the help, I know that I can set the lowest value I want, so that'll be a one on the dice, and then it's up to but not including this highest value. So if I have a 20-sided dice, I want that to be 21, and then the size one just tells me how many dice I have. So if I roll them all together, I want to generate four random numbers. And there you go. So I get a 13, an 8, a 14, and a 10. If I run it again, I'll get a different set of numbers. And you can use that to sample from these distributions as many times as you want. The sort of thing that would be really difficult to do without using a programming language. All right, the next thing to notice is that this is not a list. It's something called an array. And there are important differences between them, although they're similar data structures, okay? So we can make arrays by passing in lists. It's kind of an operation you can do with this NumPy array function. So here I've passed in a range. So we know what range four does. It gives us the numbers zero, one, two, three, not including four. I can also pass in a list of lists. So here I've done one, two, three, four, five, six as separate lists inside this list. And what that'll give me, in one case, I'll get an array going through zero to three. And then in the other case, I'll get a matrix. So this is a two by three matrix with those values inside. 
So that's really nice. This ability to do matrices is pretty good. Um, just like with lists, now we can loop. So we can go through these using for in. So for every item in the R array, print it out. So zero, one, two, three. And also we can slice just like before. So just like with lists, we can say minus two to the end. So that'll be the last two items in the list, two and three. Okay, so that works the same too. It's very similar for matrices and other higher dimensional arrays. It's just that now we have more options. So instead of going through item by item, this will go through row by row. And once you have the rows, now it's like a 1D array again. So you can go through element by element inside there. So one, two, and then I've gone through and printed each element. And then three, four, and then five, six. Okay, so it's a little more complicated because there's more stuff to think about. Um, but really it's the same mechanics just done in a nested loop now. All right, we can also slice. So we can either ask for a particular item inside a matrix, we can ask for a particular row, or we can even slice to get a column. Okay, then we can see one, one, two, and one, three, five are what we get out there. All right, not so bad. So just like before, kind of trying to add all the items in individually was too tricky for lists, and it would be very difficult if you want big lists. Same for arrays. So there are some really handy convenience functions in NumPy to help make arrays easily. So look at these. We've got linspace, ones, I and diag. So what do you think those four functions are going to do? They're all going to generate arrays or matrices. What do you think? So go ahead and after you've thought about it, let's check. So linspace has generated an array with 0, 0 0.2, 0 0.4, 0 0.6, 0 0.8, and 1. So that's six items equally spaced between zero and one, including one. So that's a little different than the range, right? Um, but this is really nice. So we've got equally spaced things along a line. So this is our lens space. Very handy in engineering because a lot of times we want to say, fill out some parameter between two extremes, maybe an aspect ratio or maybe a strength, right? So very common that we'd want to have a lens space there. The function ones, not so surprisingly, has returned an array full of ones, and we can give it a shape that we want. So we said we want a three by two array of ones, and so that's what we got, okay? The function i has given us identity matrix. Um, so that means it's a square matrix, zeros everywhere except ones on the diagonal. And last but not least, we've got diag, which is a diagonal matrix, and we pass it in either a list or an array, and it'll put that along the diagonal. So we can set the diagonal values. Again, useful for things like eigenvalue analysis. All right, good. So we can make these things pretty nice. I want you to get a little practice with this. So I've given you two exercises. The first one is to define a three by three diagonal matrix, call it my matrix, and then I want the value of the diagonal to be two. So all of them will be twos. And I think you can make that two different ways. So write the code twice, and make sure you get the same thing. Second, take that array, my matrix, and slice it to get a 1D array of zero, zero, two. And again, you should be able to do that two different ways. Okay. So far, so good, um, but what's really great about arrays is what you can do with them, right? So the first thing is that we can talk about things that don't really make sense on lists at all, things that are inherently matrix or array operations. For example, a transpose, matrix multiplication, inner products, and cross products. So here we've got that matrix we defined above, one, two, three, four, five, six, but now I've taken the transpose. So it's one, three, five, two, four, six. The matrix multiplication you can get with the at symbol. Um, so I took the transpose so it would line up with A because you need the indices balance to do matrix multiplication. And so this three by two matrix multiplied by a three vector gave me a two vector as the output. 
and then an inner product between these two, right? So that'll be one times four, two times five, and three times six, all added together is the inner product. And then the cross product, right? Two vectors at 90 degrees, uh, perpendicular vector output. Okay, so those are great. That's really useful for things like uh, when you're doing matrix operations, like solving linear systems, really useful when you're doing coordinate transformations. A lot of that's best expressed matrix and vectors. Um, but even when we're just using things that might otherwise seem like you could use a list, it's still much better to use arrays. And here's an example of why. So I've got the same values here, but I've just turned them into two lists. So these are not arrays, they're just lists. And I want to do double the first list and then add the second list. What am I going to get? Well, we saw what happens when you do this kind of operation on lists, and it's probably not what you actually want. Uh, so instead, it's repeated the first list twice and then concatenated the second list, uh, which you know, very rarely is that what engineers mean uh, when they write something like this down. So we can get the right answer uh, by using list comprehensions. And we did see how to do that last time. You can use a zip statement and then you can apply this to each element and you'll come up with the right answer. Six, nine, 12 is double the first list and then add the values in the second list. But you don't need to if you use arrays. In arrays, all of these operations will automatically distribute. This is called vectorization, or it's called um, broadcasting, or element by element. So whatever you call it, uh, almost always that's what we want in engineering. So this is really handy that it happens automatically with arrays. Okay, the other thing we talked about is that you get these functions for free. So we get numpy square root, and we get log and we get sine. We also get e and we get pi. So there's a lot of nice built-in math in NumPy. So why don't you take a look at these and see if you can figure out what the outputs are going to be for each of them before you kick play. All right, so I'll let you go through those and make sure that you understand what those answers are. And to give you a little more practice, here's three more things for you to do. So create an array C, which is my matrix times the array A. So that my matrix, and then we'll multiply it by A. Okay, so these are the operations and that should equal C. And then I want you to look up the help for Linalg solve and use that to solve a system of equations. So we're going to have something I don't know what this is yet, or I'm not telling you, but you can see it. Um, so this matrix times x equals c, I want you to solve this for x, okay? And you can look that up. This is the function, but you need to look it up to see how to use it, so a little practice with help. And then we actually know what both of these should be, right? We know that c should be 2a, and we know that x should be a, based on how we set this up. So I want you to use assert to write tests to make sure that you got out the answer you wanted. So a little practice writing tests. Okay, so go through and try those three. All right, finally, of course, we can write functions for arrays. That's going to happen. We know that functions are a really nice way to organize your code. Um, so first we can copy paste some code from the previous notebooks. So this is the is odd function, and then we have this double then add function. Completely copied and pasted from before, and now I'm going to apply them to A and B. And look at that, they work out of the box. Uh, so now I'm testing A, so that was one, two, three, odd, even, odd. It worked, and then double then add works too. That gives us the same answer we got from above. Notice if I try to use list version of A, this isn't going to work. Oops, doubly because I misspelled it. If I try to use the list version of A, it's not going to work. This operation doesn't even apply to lists, whereas I don't have to do anything new to the code and it'll automatically broadcast and be applied element by element in the case of an array. So really handy. 
Um, but let's also get a little practice writing a function that an engineer might use that you can't do with lists at all. So let's do the case here of uh, rotating a point in space. So say I have our normal XY coordinate system and we have some point in space A, okay? And what I want, so we can think of a vector moving out to that point. And I want to think about some angle Q and I'm going to rotate this point A through that angle to get some new point P. Okay, so this is the exercise. It's a change of coordinate systems, happens a thousand times in engineering for a thousand different reasons. So how can we do this? Well, there's something called a rotation matrix, which I'll define in just a second, which gives us a whole matrix. And then all we have to do is multiply by A and the result will be P. This is the definition of this rotation matrix. It's one that when we multiply by A, we'll get P out, okay? So that's very easy to code. Um, in fact, it's just right here. So I need to define rotation matrix. Then I'll pass it Q as a variable. That's definitely the input. I'll use the matrix multiplication symbol at, and that's it. I'll return the value P. So now all I need to do is define this rotation matrix. And that rotation matrix, you can look it up if you don't know this already, or we can kind of figure it out just based on uh, sine and cosine. So to test it out, I've got A, and so I've set this equal to one, one, one here and one here. And then I made a lin space for Q. So Q, I've asked for nine points between zero and pi. So that'll be zero, pi over eight, two pi over eight, which is pi over four, and so on until we get up to pi. Okay, and then I'll just print. All right, so it's good that when we had zero rotation, we just get back our point. So that's a good sanity check. And when we go all the way around pi, 180 degrees, then I've just switched from positive quadrant to the negative quadrant, minus one, minus one. It's a little bit hard to tell if these other points are right or not, though. And so, in fact, we'll use this as an excuse to start thinking about plotting in the next video.